So here I'm going to talk about interest rate parity in international macroeconomics. Basically, this says that currency appreciations and depreciations are related to the interest rate differential or the difference between two countries' interest rates. Right. I talk about this a lot. I have an exchange rate model built on this. But right now I'm going to basically run through some numbers to show how these numbers line up. Right. So the idea here is that we're going to have some numbers that I made up. Don't really match real life, but what you know, it's basically some round numbers that work. Here's the home interest rate. I've got 2%. Foreign interest rate is 4%. And then this is the expected future exchange rate. Now, in my PPP example, I gave uh, 1.25 uh, units of uh, home con country currency per one unit of foreign country currency. I'm going to kind of keep that because that's one way where expectations are formed. This is the reciprocal, all right? And so this is the other point of view. This is foreign currency per one unit of home. And what we're going to solve for is today's exchange rate. That's a variable that moves. And I always try to make this point. The future is known or expected. It's the present today that changes, right? And so this is already solved, right? But because I'm using Excel, but we're going to change the numbers over here. We're going to plug in some different numbers and get some different results. So here's the idea. The rates of return between the two countries' investments must equal. That's the interest rate parity part. One country's final, you know, whatever you earn on an investment must equal what the other country pays. Otherwise, if one country pays too much, all the capital will flow into the higher paying country. Right now, the price that's going to equalize that is the exchange rate. So just to think about it, if all the capital flows into one country, it should push up the exchange rate. And so the, the exchange rate is what changes. And basically, that stronger currency is going to take away the advantage that the higher paying country had. So it's going to eliminate that opportunity for arbitrage. And this is how we can walk it through. If I'm a home country investor, I never convert money. And I never convert money back. All, right, all I earn... I have my principal times the uh, home rate of return. If it's 2%, I earn 1.02, and I'll show that below. But the foreign country, if I, and that's me again. I'm a home investor. I want to invest in the foreign country. It's a three-step process. First, I convert, and I get foreign currency. And then I earn interest, just like I would at home, but then I convert back at this expected exchange rate, and, and then I turn all my earnings back. So I can earn money both on, on the interest in the foreign country, but I can also earn it on the conversion. If the currency is strengthening while I'm, while I'm holding it, I'm actually making extra money. If it's weakening, it actually loses money. And what causes the, that strengthening and weakening is the, diff, the gap between today and the future. And so uh, basically, if today strengthens, it might take away some of the possible growth. And so here's the numbers. I've got a $2,000 home investment, and these are my two choices. I can... Invested at home, take my 2000 and all I do is I earn 2%, so that's uh, an extra $40, and so my investment at the end is $2,040. The foreign investment must equal that through interest rate parity. So with foreign, it's that three-step process. I've got my $2,000, convert it into foreign currency at, the. this is the question mark, this is the thing that's going to change. Right, and then if that happens again, remember my currency's units are smaller, so I'm converting into a bigger currency, so I get fewer units of those. And then I take this, and I'm earning here. I'm earning four percent, so it's gonna be bigger. And then convert it back at the expected rate. It's exactly two thousand forty dollars. Right, so that's interest rate parity. And what is the exchange rate that equalizes it? It is this one point two seven, which is simply solving using the equation. Okay, and so uh, the diff interest rate differential, home minus foreign is negative 2%, and pretty close, 2%, right? That's how much uh, that the currency has to change, okay? And if, if foreign is paying 2% more, that means that the foreign currency has to be losing, and you can see that it's losing 2%, it's going from 1.27 to 1.25, and so I'm earning an extra 2% interest, but I'm losing 2% on the currency uh, depreciation. And so let's do three changes here. First, I'm going to raise home interest rate to three and watch what happens. The interest rate differential falls. And look, the currency fell from 1.27 to 1.26. It's actually uh, became weaker. So if home raises rates, foreign becomes weaker. Okay, Foreign's currency becomes weaker, which means home strengthens. That's a huge finding. It's just something to know from international finance and macro. If home raises rates, Home's currency appreciates, and that's shown here as foreign depreciating, right? Now, what happens if I raise the foreign rate? I'm going to take it to five, and what do you think will happen? Foreign's currency should appreciate, and it does. It went up from one point, 
uh, 27 and 1.28, okay, and, that, and this number solves it. Now look over here, whichever one we do, it still equals 240 over here. So here I'm converting, getting a little bit, uh, let's, let's compare, oops, getting a little, little bit less here, so watch this. Um, if I have, uh, let's go back, my original numbers, I got 2 and 4. If, if home raises rates, then you can see here that uh, the, the exchange rate changes, all the numbers change and it lines up. I get slightly more, I'm basically earning extra money at home and I'm earning, have to earn extra money in foreign. All right. If foreign raises rates, the numbers change here, all right, and it's still equal over here. Okay, and now this now home home is still paying only two percent, right? And so what's happening is that the, this gap you're earning three percent extra in foreign, but the exchange rate is changing to take away some of those gains. Okay, now I go back to my original numbers, and I'm here. I'm going to raise the expected, the, basically the expectations for the future. So if something is happening in the foreign country where it's good news, something that makes me think that the foreign currency will be stronger, and and uh, basically this has to do with investor expectations. I'm going to change this to one point three. And now you look over here, all of this changes as well. It still equals the same home and foreign investments. But if you compare the two currencies, what happens if foreign looks better over time? The foreign currency strengthens today. It went from 1.27 to 1.34. Okay. Now the interest rate differential is still 2. The uh, depreciation is still 2%. Um, but what caused that basically is an, another important finding for international finance is that if I think the foreign currency is going to do well in the future, I'm going to act today. I don't wait to buy the currency, I buy it now. So the exchange rate moves now, in the present, based on expectations for the future. It has to do with intertemporal arbitrage. People, you know, if I wait to make money, someone's going to beat me to it and they're going to make money, so I have to beat them. Uh, basically, you can, uh, you can make money over two different time periods. And it also uh, pushes people to basically move faster than any other investor, and the fastest you can move is today. So uh, that's super important. It's true for stock prices. As soon as a piece of news comes out for a stock, the stock price should rise. Even if it's for something a year down the road, prices for assets move today. And that's what happened. Good news that, that raised expectations in the future actually raised the foreign currency value today. All right? So that's what we did with IRP. Right, we have these numbers over here that show how a home investment has to equal a foreign investment, but uh, this interest rate differential has to be canceled out by this movement from the, the buying it today and then converting it back. This can be turned into a percentage appreciation as it moves uh, and gains or loses value between the present and the future. Right? These numbers show it. I can turn 2000 into 2040 at 2% at home or I can turn 2000 into 2040 at 4% at home. And what's changing is that the exchange rate today is changing to make sure that the gap in interest rates is equal to uh, the ex appreciation over time in the currency. All right? And that gives us the main finding. Interest rate differentials drive appreciations and depreciations. And the other thing that I mentioned is that expectations in the future can drive uh, exchange rates or other asset prices today.